All right, so uh, let me introduce you to uh, my colleagues, as I was saying, uh, Eleni Tolli, who is the Managing Director of Mythos Europe, uh, Gerard uh, Cohen from uh, Ferris Fair and Dance, uh, he's working uh, extensively with the Open Science uh, Community, uh, um, Andreas Athenodoru from uh, the Cyprus Institute, uh, who is also uh, with a physics background, uh, who is here with us to talk about the Mythos activities about FAIR, that we're doing uh, around FAIR, uh, and also um, Adam uh, from the University of Debrecen. He is a data steward and a data um, repository manager. Uh, so he will talk about uh, those uh, kind of techni technicalities um, of FAIR. Uh, and uh, also we, with us, we have Valentina Vassallo from the Cyprus Institute as well. Uh, who is, uh, her background is in, in he, she specializes in interoperability issues and she will talk about metadata. So uh, Eleni uh, and Jerry, Gerard, the, the floor is yours. Please, uh, you, you, you can start. Um, oh yes, and I know that I have to start your presentation. So, excuse me, yes. I will share my screen. Okay, hello also from my side. Uh, I hope you can hear me well. So I will only make a short introduction to this meeting and then uh, uh, we'll follow the, the hopefully very interesting discussions uh, with the people participating today in this panel. Maybe you can show already the next slide, Ellie. So uh, the title of this of this workshop today could be actually also uh, why implementation matters, uh, because what we want to present today uh, are in this workshop are two different um, dimensions, let's call them, that are brought together. The one is the importance of having a framework for fair semantic artifacts, but it's also equally important. Uh, that this scheme is used and also tested in, let's call it uh, real life, uh, in real life. So FAIR, uh, I, I think we can all agree on this, FAIR is a term that uh, has been established uh, in, the, in the last years, and uh, this awareness has also led to the understanding that not only the data, but also the metadata which, uh, uh, of which they are accompanied have to be have to respect and follow the same the same principles. It's uh, fair ontologies and uh, fair um, vocabularies uh, what make human and machines uh, understand each other and avoid things as uh, this uh, this uh, a comic strip uh, uh, implies. So first first fair is a project that uh, is consistently working on on fair aspects and methodologies and best practices and has co greatly contributed uh, to this. NIFOS Europe is a regional implementation project working on fair issues but working on fair issues while supporting the onboarding of services uh, to EOS. Because this is for us a very important aspect, we took the initiative inside the project, actually Andreas and Ellie took the initiative to create uh, an internal task force on semantics, ontologies, uh, metadata, and etc. cetera. Uh, through the ta FAIR task force, where of course FAIR is playing, playing a leading role, we are collaborating very closely with FAIR is FAIR. And this is what we would like to present today. Uh, aspects and outcomes of the both uh, parts of our work so discuss with you recommendations and best practices about uh, fair semantics which will be mostly Gerald doing this and uh, uh, but also uh, discuss aspects from the point of view of research communities by presenting selected use cases also through our experts that are participating today I believe uh, it, it's a very important workshop, not uh, because we are participating in this or because we are co-organizing this, but uh, it's, it's really a very timely discussion. And uh, I have to say that we are really looking forward to continue this discussion, not only uh, as part of uh, conferences and workshops, but also uh, um, in kind of day-to-day uh, -day activities. 
So this was all for me. For the rest, it's uh, Jerry, Ellie, Andreas, Adam, and uh, Valentina. Thank you very much. Yeah, so I think, uh, thank, thanks very much, Eleni, and I, I completely agree. I think um, uh, we, we've already uh, touched most of the points of the agenda, so maybe we can go to the, the next slide as well. Um, yeah, if you click it a couple of times, sorry, I thought I would have control of the, <laughs> of the presentation. Yeah, maybe just click it once or twice more. Yeah, great. Yeah, so as, as uh, Eleni mentioned, um, the, the, uh, the EOSC and also the, the science system is, is quite complex. So today we kind of bring together two different perspectives, um, uh, uh, both one uh, from, the, from the grassroots upwards and, and one maybe a little bit more of a top-down approach and see where we can meet in the middle and uh, how we can better collaborate. Next slide. Yeah, so the, the semantics metadata and ontologies, it's clear that they have a central role in enabling fair and interoperability in the EOSC. So you can see here the, first, the idea of a, a, metadata, a metadata layer that would go through um, different scientific communities and, and increase the interoperability between those communities. Next slide. Yeah. Yeah, um, and, and um, when we proposed this session, I think that some of the feedback that we got was that um, it, it might be a bit uh, too, too technical or a bit left field of what's usually presented at open science fair. So I think we, we've done our best to try and make it engaging and show where it's relevant. So here's an example that I've borrowed from Eva Mendes from uh, Universidad Carlos Trace de Madrid. And um, she mentions uh, quite often the toothbrush effect with metadata. So I mentioned before um, that the, this idea of a metadata layer that could go through scientific communities to increase interoperability. And everybody's in agreement that metadata is, is needed and useful, but there's the toothbrush effect. Everyone thinks it's a good idea, but, every, but nobody wants to use somebody else's. Next slide. So we end up with a kind of proliferation of recommendations and um, uh, different uh, um, uh, practices, protocols, and tools. And there's often not enough adoption and implementation of the things that are already there. Next slide. Yeah, so to avoid this, uh, projects like Fair is Fair and also NIFOS uh, do what we can to work together and collaborate and build on each other's expertise and recommendations and outputs so that for, for researchers and research communities, they see something that's uh, seamless and that um, it, it's built together and avoid more of this proliferation of different uh, uh, recommendations and standards. Yeah, I think this was my, my little introduction to try and <laughs> already begin with uh, some topics for engagement. And I'm going to pass over to uh, Ellie now also so that we can get a bit of an understanding of who's in the room with us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jared. Uh, let me go to my Mentimeter and present. I hope you can all see that. Can you do, can you confirm? Yeah, we can see it. Perfect. So if you could go to the menti.com, uh, hopefully most of you are familiar with this tool. Uh, you just uh, go to www.menti.com and you just enter the code 58937227, as you see it here to just um, uh, interact, but that, that's our way to interact with each other. Uh, we couldn't find a better way to do it as this is a virtual uh, session. So I uh, hope, you, hope you also enjoy it. Um, let's see. Uh, so 58937027, if some of my colleagues can also enter that in the chat as I, I will start the, the mentee. And we want to know about you, which part of the world are you connected or streaming from right now? So let's see, who do we have in the room? Uh, okay, we can be more specific than Europe. Okay, Vienna, okay. Finland, the Netherlands, Greece, United Nations. So mostly European uh, cities, I see. We have North Carolina, Saudi Arabia, okay. Oh, hi everyone. Uh, nice to have you here. 
Okay, nice. Great, Cyprus, Australia, even, oh, perfect. So we're, we're okay, perfect, perfect. So we have uh, quite some continents that, that we cover. All right. Um, I'll move on to the next one. You can continue adding adding your uh, your country. Nice to see all of you here. Um, and this is uh, this is actually a personal question that I added here. I, I took the liberty of adding here, uh, since I know that everyone is struggling and have struggled, and uh, also mentally, uh, it, it's it's difficult to navigate life uh, in the COVID era. So, what would be your number one advice or tip for life and work life in the COVID era, if you could share it with us? just to help uh, one another. Be positive, okay. Do sport a lot. I don't know what the, what's the measurement of, of, of like, like what a lot is <laughs> for, for, for me, it's not. A hybrid office, home, work life, go for a walk, strategically say no to things, okay, because of burnout, be happy, don't overwork, do what hearts desire, good coffee, I can, I can, uh, I can agree to that. Be nice with people, yes, be compassionate. Uh, tai Chi practice. So yes, yeah, so, so sports, you know, being active and uh, being compassionate. I, 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 this is what I read. Uh, and connect with friends and family. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is, uh, this is really nice. Um, okay. And then what is the type of your affiliated organization now? Uh, so where, where do you work for? which organization, what type of organization is that? Mm -hmm. Majority comes from universities and research organizations, okay. We have a couple of research infrastructures in the room. And research funding organizations as well. And scientific societies and academies, citizen science, organizations, science platforms, okay. So most of us, okay, perfect. So we have a, we have a, a, a good mix of people, mostly from the universities and the research infrastructures. What is the capacity under which you participate in the session based, uh, uh, you know, uh, given that the, the title and the, the whole uh, subject of this session is about uh, service providers um, and how they enable fair. Mm -hmm. Well, all of you are service providers. Okay, we have some someone that uses services also or uh, in, in one way or another, so that's good. <laughs> so we have service providers, service consumers, and other. I'm very curious to know what other is. If you could type in the chat uh, what other is, because it, it's it's quite a, quite a substantial um, amount of people. Okay, and then um, last one for now we have more uh, later. Which domain or research community do you belong to? Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. So we have people. Okay. Yeah, we have people from, we don't have from, agri from agricultural sciences so far, but we have from engineering and technology, which is uh, expected, natural sciences, humanities and arts, medical and health sciences, and social sciences, and other. And again, if, if, you, if you want to share more about your, uh, your uh, selection to the uh, other, 
uh, option, please uh, feel free to uh, share it with us in the chat. And with that, thank you very much. It's nice to, uh, to um, be uh, introduced to you all. And I will pass the floor again to my colleague, Gerard, to start, uh, to start his session, to start his presentation, sorry. Thanks, thanks very much, Ali. So, um, yeah, my presentation is going to share the work of uh, Fair's Fair of the Fair Semantics team. Next slide. Yeah, so, for those of you who um, uh, don't know, Fair's Fair is a three year project uh, aiming to lay the foundations for fair practices, policy, and culture in, in the EOSC. The project started in March 2019, and uh, it's going to finish next year in February 2020, uh, 2022. And uh, the aim of the project is really to lay the foundations for fair practices, policy, and culture in the EOSC. Next slide. In Work Package 2, Fair is Fair, we look at the topic of interoperability and semantics to support enabling fair semantics. Um, in the project, we use an umbrella term of semantic artifacts to bundle together resources like ontologies, terminologies, taxonomies, thesauri, and vocabularies. So depending on which research community people come from, they tend to use maybe one of these terms more than the others. So we tried to go for something that was a bit neutral. And um, so that it, we, we could have a, a, a common way of referring to them that people could understand, regardless of their domain. We, we work towards enabling the I2 of FAIR and making recommendations so that the resources themselves can be considered as FAIR. And our goal in the FAIR semantics team is to have recommendations for uh, making semantics FAIR, uh, an agreed set of best practices to follow with the semantics community at large. And uh, the work that we do, um, it's, it's, it's largely revolved around gathering input and feedback from uh, grassroots initiatives such as Research Data Alliance and also holding dedicated events and workshops to try and engage with different research communities. Over the three years of the project, we're going to have uh, three different uh, releases of the uh, recommendations. So the most recent version was published already in January of this year. And that one includes 17 priority recommendations and four best practice recommendations. And then, um, yeah, I'm going to share just a, one example of that. So um, here you can see priority recommendation number three, and that states that a common mid minimum metadata schema must be used to describe semantic artifacts and their content. So this is really about talking about metadata for describing a semantic artifact. It's a little bit of a circular idea, but I think um, I'm going to show wh why this is relevant. Uh, next slide. Yeah, so um, we, can, we can consider that a, a community of researchers might want to align on common metadata for increasing the, the understanding that they have between themselves about their data sets and also for interoperability within their domain so that they can more easily link to and use the, uh, the data that's created by, by other researchers in, in a similar field as themselves. And in order to do this, they will and engage a, a domain ontologist to be able to uh, help them to build an ontology, a semantic artifact. And this ontologist has a limited potential at the moment to find and reuse existing semantic artifacts. So in a lot of cases, he might have to, he or she might have to rely on creating them from, from scratch. Next slide. And um, the thing is, if just one back. <laughs> Yeah, so the thing is that the, um, the, um, there are many semantic artifacts or potentially there are many semantic artifacts that are already existing and um, which could be a good fit. But the semantic, the, the domain ontologist is, is uh, limited in, in their potential to know about these and figure out which ones are already existing. Next slide. Yeah, so um, with, uh, with the common minimum metadata, semantic artifacts could be more easily indexed for search engines. Next slide. Yeah, and a wide range of resources could be made available for ontologists and researchers to use. So this might mean that they could completely avoid um, developing a new, a new ontology or a new uh, um, resource, or it could just mean that they, they have access to be able to pick and choose 
from existing resources that are there as a starting point for building their own resource that's tailored to their needs. Um, let me see where we are here. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm, I just wanted to give a couple of examples of uh, the changes that we've made between the first version and the second version. So, for example, here it shows the change between um, the first set of semantics was was uh, deliverable 2.2, and the most recent, uh, the second set is uh, deliverable D2.5. So you can see here 2.2 on the top, and the, the newer version D2.5 is in the middle of the page there. And uh, one of the changes that we had made was to introduce alignment with the RFC 2000. Uh, 119. So of the recommendations of the um, of the um, priority recommendations, sorry, nine of them are, are must or mandatory, seven of them are should and, and just one is optional. So you can see here P recommendation um, number three is, is one of the ones that we consider to be mandatory for, for the reasons I showed in this little use case a second ago. Next slide. Um, yeah, and the, then the uh, another thing that's been introduced and changed from the first version to the second version is the introduction of the notion of, of trust. So um, the, the references to trustworthiness as an important criteria for semantic repositories has been entered here. So if you can see um, the recommendation for in the, in the first set of recommendations was published the semantic artifact and its content in a semantic repository. And then you see in the updated version, this is an optional recommendation, semantic artifacts and its content should be published in a trustworthy semantic repository. So the notion of trust becomes included there. And um, yeah, the usefulness of the recommendations and really making sure that they're, they're a good fit and, and they're, they're flexible enough to be used by a broad range of research communities, but also semantic services, service providers depends really on broad participation from research communities. So there's a number of ways you can get involved. Later this year, we'll have a workshop to discuss the future of the recommendations and the feedback from this will be used for the final iteration of the recommendations that will come um, next year in February. Next slide. If you already wanted to um, have a look at the recommendations and provide some feedback directly on any one of them, we have a GitHub that we use to collect feedback. So the link is there. I can also put it in the chat in a couple of moments. And we, we have a use of labels. I mean, of course, you don't have to use a label. Any comment that's added there uh, um, is uh, relevant. But we have a kind of a use of labels there for helping us to filter any feedback that's there. I won't say we're overwhelmed with feedback in terms of the GitHub, but um, yeah, maybe if, if anybody wants to, to uh, give feedback there, it's one of the channels. We're usually just activating this in the context of, of workshops and, and webinars. Uh, another way of gathering feedback or participation with the recommendations is through the RDA. So uh, within the vocabulary and semantic services uh, interest group, there are two task groups that uh, both work on aspects that are, are uh, somehow interacted with one foot inside fair fair and one, one foot on the outside. One of those is uh, the task group on minimum metadata for fair semantics, which is led by Clément Chanquet. And this looks at uh, defining the minimum metadata schema that would be needed for fair semantics. So linking back to the example I had shown previously, uh, this, is, this is being created based on a DCAT profile. Um, the other uh, the other task group that could be interesting to join, especially for the people in the, this context, is the Fair Semantic Repositories task group. So um, I co-chair this group together with Alexandra Kokanaki from the British Oceanographic Data Center, and we work together to evaluate the recommendations from the perspective of repositories and service providers, and also to establish a list of tech, technical implement, implementations for their recommendations. So seeing which technical barriers there are to, to really adopting and implementing them in uh, real life use cases. Next slide. Yeah, and just to be to, to be really clear, <laughs> the work presented by me today is a collaborative effort of the whole Fair Semantics team. I think the majority of the slides come from presentations that have been given by the task leader, Jan Lafranc. I also work together with colleagues from CSC in Finland and also uh, with um, uh, colleagues from, from GoFair as well. So you can see people mentioned there. Uh, thanks very much for, for, for your time, for listening. If anybody has any questions, feel free to ask them now or also if you want to have a think about it, I think we have a kind of an open question section that will be at the end of the, the whole session. Yeah, thanks very much. Thank you, Gerard. Uh, very impressive, the work that you're doing. Very, very uh, useful and applicable to, to everyone here in the room. 
Uh, so let me now move on to Andreas because uh, I'm mindful of the time also. Let me um, stop sharing my screen and share uh, Andreas' presentation. Uh, apologies uh, for, um, for this, but I, I have to, due to some uh, limitations, uh, some restrictions uh, on the Zoom, I have to uh, control the slides for the presenters. So that's why you will hear a lot uh, the phrase, uh, next, <laughs> next slide, please. Um, okay, moving on to um, Andreas. Great. Uh, so can you hear me? Perfect. Okay, perfect. So hi everyone, uh, I'm Andreas Athinodoro from the Cyprus Institute and I am the NIFOS Europe Work Package 6 leader and today I'll be uh, presenting how we're servicing, uh, how NIFOS Europe is servicing the service providers. So next slide. So as um, uh, um, you may have heard before from, uh, from Eleni, uh, NIFOS Europe is an Infraios 5B project um, in which um, 15 member states and associated countries uh, are participating with a total of 22 partners. And these partners are mainly institutions uh, that perform research, institutions which are uh, uh, hosting infrastructure and institutions which have an extended experience in open science. So let's go to the next slide. So, um, so this basic, Okay, uh, so this basically tells us that um, NIFOS Europe is, is, is mainly built on two blocks, the operators of, of services for research and technology and open science communities and infrastructure. So we kind of combine the, um, the service provision and the open science in order to offer uh, the scientific communities um, solutions uh, that will enhance uh, their productivity and uh, um, uh, enable them to produce high quality uh, results of high quality. So the mission of Europe, um, of NIFOS Europe is basically threefold. So first of all, is to support the development and inclusion of the national open science cloud initiatives, um, to spread the EOSC and FAIR principles in the community and train this community, and provide uh, technical and policy support in onboarding of the existing and future service providers in two years. So I'm gonna hold these two, um, these two words, service providers and fair principles. And we'll we will see how we are dealing with these two, trying to bring them together. So actually NIFOS Europe supports open science. So this means that we, we are providing all the necessary tools to the long tail of science through the EOS. So we take, um, uh, we, we also uh, support uh, the lead users and we move to the uh, long tail of science. We are servicing all possible disciplines. We are fo focusing on engineering, engineering, technology, natural sciences, information and communication, social, social sciences, medical and health sciences and agricultural sciences. And we support these communities by providing thematic services, generic services, repositories. We also provide access to tailored open research data man management tools, and we also provide training on, on FAIR principles. So next slide. So um, one of the things that is, is certainly, I mean, uh, um, uh, is strong in, in, in NIFOS Europe is that we, we provide, we, we work uh, on user engagement, training, and demonstrators. This is this is this has been done by ensuring the take up of core EOSC services in the in the community uh, by promoting and ensuring EOSC research outcomes through concrete support to users, by promoting uptake of fair among research communities, by training for federated services interoperability, open research data management principles, repos repository certification fair, and by involving and supporting scientific communities. Next slide. So we also support 
uh, EOS service and fair uptake in communities. And this is done um, mainly through, um, through the three different channels. So uh, policy, policy and strategy, and strategy basically what we do is that um, we have uh, assigned ambassadors from each country, SEOs promoters. These are uh, researchers, uh, these are uh, data stewards that actually um, uh, are highly involved in the scientific life of, of uh, in each uh, in each different country, and they are uh, with the mission to spread the words of EOSC and FAIR. Uh, we also provide training and dissemination, namely we have material for FAIR in e and EOSC service uptake, which is available in all different mother languages of the NIFOS Europe area. And we also provide webinars for disseminating EOSC and FAIR principles in each country. And we also provide uh, open research data management tools and we enhance uh, the current, current practices. Next slide. So in order to make this, um, um, to, to initiate this, uh, this effort, we came up with a flagship scientific communities. Namely, we have identified four highly cross-disciplinary real user communities, life sciences, digital cultural heritage, climate, climate science, and computational physics. We provided um, services, uh, thematic services in these four um, uh, disciplines. We organized user, uh, user uh, uh, test cases. These are demonstrators basically, which, has, which have been um, um, designed so that um, real user communities uh, could run the actual thematic services in combination with uh, generic services and, and repositories and deliver results. And we executed this, uh, this um, uh, user uh, use cases. Next slide. These are examples of generic services that one can find through the through the EOS uh, through the NIFOS Europe. For instance, we provide high performance uh, computing resources, cloud machines, generic storage, and data management services. Next slide. And this is an example of uh, thematic services that, that have been uh, um, onboarded on, on EOS through NIFOS. For example, this is the KBIO server from Life Sciences, the Digital Cultural Heritage Clouder, the Live Access Server, running Array API, the Overhead and Air Quality. I mean, if you want to find more about services, you can visit our catalog. I'll share, um, we will share um the the link to the catalog to the NIFOS catalog so um how do we uh, support the service providers namely we provide service integration and onboarding by providing a pre-production environment which validates the readiness and maturity level for eos onboarding we also provide a service portfolio management system based on the eos provider and service profile we integrate these services with federation core services. We provide service categorization. And uh, following these uh, four steps, we move on the onboard to the onboarding of generic, thematic, and repository services. So next slide. So the NIFOS Europe pre-production environment includes the service catalog management, uh, which is based, uh, which is basically on, based on Agora. The authentication authorization interface, the help desk, monitoring, and accounting. Next slide. And here comes uh, a question how fair enabling are the services? So, for instance, there is uh, a huge list of questions that one should answer. For instance, does a service support metadata? Does a service support semantics? Are there metadata, metadata standard, standards available for a specific domain? How much fair educated are the scientists developing a service? How about semantics interoperability? And how do we facilitate actually the inclusion of semantics, metadata schemas, ontolo ontological solutions on a service at practical level? So in order to, um, to address um, the above, basically we, we came up with the um, NIFOS Europe team of experts. This is a team with experts uh, on semantics, uh, metadata and ontologies. And in addition, we, uh, we set up this uh, nice collaboration with Fair is Fair, and as you have uh, as you have seen, I mean, from the from the pre presentation of uh, of Gary, 
I mean, uh, one can actually answer some of these questions just by following uh, the recommendations. So next. So our NIFOS Europe Task Force on Semantics, Metadata and Ontologies uh, consists of, uh, uh, of, of these people here, which are, I mean, uh, some of, I mean, uh, are well known uh, for their work on, uh, on semantics. For instance, Panos Kostandopoulos, Ayadis Bernardo. Uh, we also have George Artopoulos from Digital Culture Heritage, Soikurnia from Life Sciences, Valentina Vasallo uh, from, uh, from Digital Culture Heritage, Adam, uh, who is a data steward, and Vicky, uh, who is actually coming from um, um, humanities. Next uh, slide. So, this NIFOS Europe team of experts is actually it's actually an additional action to the to the DOA. So this is uh, this is this was a necessity that uh, that uh, have arised by facing all the challenges that uh, fair uh, that fair enabling uh, of services uh, uh, brings into the game. So what are the goals? So the goal is to provide more context on the foggy subject of fair enabling services by answering questions and increasing awareness on the technicalities of fair implementation. And we want also to everyone understand the basics of semantics and the role of metadata and controlled vocabularies. Uh, work with service providers to analyze the different types of metadata. So what we want to do is to provide tailored advice for appropriate, appropriate use in a research data management lifecycle to contribute to some parts of the, of the implementation of domain data protocols and to contribute to the EOSC FAIR task force and EOSC FAIR metrics and data quality task force conversations. So next slide. So what are the activities that uh, the NIFOS Europe task force um, uh, are um, performing? So first of all, we want to understand the fair needs and readiness of services included in onboarding by running a survey. Actually, the survey is running right now, I mean, through the NIFOS uh, Europe service provider. So soon we will have, uh, we will have the results. We organize webinars for onboarded service providers and repository man managers. Uh, we provide a pathway on integration and uh, or alteration that are necessary for enhancing existing services or new services. And we are um, working on receiving feedback from, all, uh, from open research data management tools, such as uh, the uh, license clearance tool, the recall, the repository policy generator, and the, um, and the uh, ro Rolex. So uh, that's all from me. Thanks for, for your attention. And uh, please, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. So thanks a lot. Thank you, uh, Andreas. Uh, I think that be before we move on to the, um, to the next two presentations, we could have a couple of minutes to answer some questions that I see here, maybe, uh, let's, let's go up. Uh, where, where, where the slides will be available. Yes, we will send the link. So one question is about the slides and where they will be uh, available. Uh, in, in on the nodo and we will share the link with everyone and okay so there are no questions there are more more of a comments <clears throat> sorry I, I couldn't see uh, so we could if there are no questions then for the for Gerard or for Andreas we could move on to uh, Valentina Masallo perfect then I, then I will stop and start to my screen again Okay, who will be talking about, um, where is it? Semantic uh, integration. 
So good morning, uh, everyone. I'm uh, Valentina Vassallo and I work uh, at the Cyprus Institute and I collaborate uh, with the uh, NIFOS project. And today, in the context of this workshop, uh, I will present you the uh, experience developed uh, in the VSIM uh, project case study. And I will uh, discuss how the development of a semantic knowledge integration framework uh, can support the data management uh, of multidisciplinary research infrastructures and guarantee uh, its fairness. In fact, as we uh, saw also before uh, uh, from the uh, previous uh, uh, presentation, uh, recently the focus uh, uh, shifted to the role of research infrastructures uh, to address actions uh, needed for enabling uh, the fairness of data, and particularly related to the uh, use of metadata and ontologies. Next, please. So uh, it is a matter of fact that uh, different scientific communities produce different kinds uh, of data sets that rely on different data uh, description, that they follow also different approaches uh, and local uh, organizations. So such an approach uh, produces also many issues, uh, um, like for example, the data sets uh, fragmentation, the data heterogeneity, and also inhomogeneity or the access limits, and sometimes also the lack of standardization. Uh, please, next. So uh, uh, therefore, in, uh, in a multidisciplinary environment, it's essential uh, to establish a knowledge communication framework that actually is a, a standardization, uh, which can guarantee some fundamentals and basic uh, principles, uh, such as a full and uh, inclusive description and documentation of the uh, interdisciplinary and also diverse uh, digital resources, or for example, their long-term uh, preservation, uh, mainly the access and also the, uh, the reuse. So overcoming also uh, the uh, such inhomogeneity uh, uh, between data uh, produced by different research uh, communities as uh, I previously mentioned. Uh, next, please. So to, to this regard, uh, the experience developed uh, within the project VSIM uh, is uh, today presented as an example in the adoption of best practices uh, for fair implementation. Uh, VSIM, which uh, NIFOS uh, is the evolvement, uh, provided an integrated infrastructure platform for scientific communities, specifically in uh, life sciences, uh, climate science, and digital cultural heritage. So by linking data, <clears throat> visualization resources, services, software, and uh, tools. And in this way, in this vein, uh, VSIM developed uh, a solution in order to harmonize the variety of approaches and descriptions in the three different research communities. Also providing a semantic tool for retrieval and discovery of relation for interdis interdisciplinary use of, the, uh, of their content. So in this way, data can be shared by different uh, um, disciplines and communities and also used in different ways uh, with respect to the original ones. It was the previous one, uh, Ellie. So the semantic uh, uh, solution is conceptualized uh, as a cross and interdisciplinary tool in order to access and retrieve various digital resource, uh, resources, enable data interoperability, trace digital provenance, uh, allow data interpretation, and permit uh, data reuse. Next, please. So we ask, uh, why are these aspects uh, so important? Mainly because they are essential to guarantee uh, the findability, accessibility, interoperability, and reusability of the data. Principles that uh, representing, uh, we can say, the conditio sine qua non for any research infrastructures uh, uh, nowadays. Specifically for uh, the VSIM case study, uh, we can see, for example, the findability and accessibility are guaranteed, guaranteed uh, by the common access at the research infrastructure level, uh, giving direct access to providers' data and enabling search for relevant, inf relevant information through their metadata by linking them. And moreover, the possibility to access data and the source enables to investigate data reliability and data transparency. Uh, no, uh, also, interoperability is guaranteed by the use of an ontological solution at the research infrastructure level. So the employment of the ontology facilitates the management, integration and access uh, to research data by describing uh, um, their uh, semantic relationship. 
So this choice brings also um, to data reliability, reusability. So giving users the possibility to both find data within a specific uh, research field, but also reuse them within other research uh, communities. And this last point is um, particularly interesting for uh, the possible vision within research uh, infrastructures domain. Uh, that is, of course, the defendability of data to be used also for other kinds of research. Like, for example, uh, as an example, uh, climate data to be reused for uh, cultural heritage conservation uh, purposes. So the aim is to integrate data from heterogeneous sources and to efficiently discover further scientific data of interest, uh, enabling the answering of complex uh, queries that, uh, for example, could not be, um, cannot be answered uh, from uh, individual uh, sources. Next one. So uh, in particular today, I will present you the process towards the development of the ontological cross-discipline solution uh, proposed for uh, VSIM uh, research infrastructure in the view of fulfilling the FAIR principles. And this is done through the description of the methodology uh, developed, the tools and standards employed, the use cases and the results consist cons consisting uh, of the harmonization of the data sets chosen as case studies to test the identified cross-disciplinary ontology. The next one. So uh, the establishing of research infrastructure gave users the possibility to investigate and uh, analyze uh, even vast and unstructured or fragmented data sets spread in various locations. In this way, providing also uh, a unified access and services and to uh, reveal data to specific end users, uh, uh, what we call, call data discovery. So in the, in the last decade, decade um, several European projects uh, have focused on the development of these uh, research infrastructures, uh, but dedicated either to, for example, scientific or, or humanities data, and therefore born for specific uh, research fields. Mm, so only recently we have a tendency to combine uh, diverse uh, fields. And therefore, uh, the, um, the metadata semantic models and ontologies developed and used in the research infrastructure are very specific to the kind of data they have to, uh, to describe. And for this reason, they could not apply to different uh, fields or in the case of multidisciplinary data, they apply only to specific uh, parts. Uh, here, for example, in this slide, there is a visual assessment of the different research infrastructures and the different semantic uh, resources, so like uh, data models, ontologies, uh, vocal vocabularies, that are uh, used for describing, integrating, and normalizing data sets uh, within related domain uh, research infrastructures. Next one, please. So the first step uh, of the research carried out within uh, VSIM consisted of the establishment of a methodology towards the development of such a cross-disciplinary ontological uh, solution. And this step required to adopt a strategy also to understand uh, the diversity of the provided information within the case study infrastructure. So to understand the state of the art within the, uh, the infrastructure itself, how, for example, different uh, disciplines face data standardization uh, issues, uh, what were uh, the solutions adopted by the data providers in terms of metadata standards and ontologies. Next one. So to address the questions about the, the, the data available, a data management plan survey was uh, performed. And the first phase of the methodology was the creation and circulation of the, among the providers of VSIM and the stakeholders of this survey aimed at the assessment and analysis of the data sets, uh, data sets and database provided by the three different communities to verify the uh, main relevant information. So the results of the survey has been collected and analyzed for um, continuing the, uh, the research in order to provide also uh, next directions towards the development of the framework and to address the cross the cross disciplinary structure. Next one. So the, uh, the survey uh, brought to light uh, a very interesting, uh, very interesting information and specifically for what concerns uh, the semantic structures of the data and VSIMs. Uh, appeared uh, that, for example, some data sets came uh, without uh, metadata or nor a particular uh, metadata schema. A uh, few digital archives use standardized uh, domain related um, metadata schema or ontological solutions. 
Some uh, describe their data using uh, simplified and, gen and generic cross-domain standardized data metadata like uh, Dublin Core, or very few use a reference uh, model like uh, CEDO. Uh, some uh, publish their data online through proprietary schemes that are constituted, of course, of specific uh, domain fields. And of course, uh, as you can understand, the situation provides uh, uh, inconsistencies uh, in the way <clears throat> one handles uh, different metadata formats. Maybe there might be, um, there might be some similarities. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, uh, the climate and the life science formats uh, mainly use metadata that are produced by software. Uh, or instead, uh, for uh, the case of digital cultural heritage, metadata structures require human input, like uh, HTML or uh, text formats. And uh, instead, in, le in life sciences, uh, um, there is use of core ontologies extended through the development of, uh, for example, SCOS or uh, RDF uh, uh, Tesauri. Next one. So at the beginning, uh, to overcome such differences, uh, um, the first step carried out by uh, the project was to adopt a solution based on a metadata structure uh, that was an adapted, uh, adapted doubling core schema. Uh, on which the uh, this space data repository is structured uh, to integrate the data sets from the different disciplines. Uh, of course, the choice of a metadata standards was at the beginning necessary for improving uh, uh, the findability and accessibility uh, to, the, uh, to the data. But of course, it's inevitably uh, limited to describe only a few specific aspects uh, of the uh, data content. So the risk is that this kind of description is not semantic and therefore uh, strictly connected to the type of data described and maybe not uh, applicable uh, to other kinds uh, of data. So such transformation from one end uh, uh, formalize the data according to a common standard, but from the other end um, um, makes a sort of flattening of the information uh, relative to the multidisciplinary uh, data sets. Uh, therefore, a more flexible solution able to capture the data semantics, the content meaning and the relations between so different data and communities was, uh, was needed. And we are already in the next slide. So um, in information management, two different approaches are usually followed in the de development of ontology, a data-oriented procedure uh, or a user needs-based uh, process. And the procedure followed in the present research is a data-oriented one because, in fact, it's, it's based on the multidisciplinary data available in BSIM to make uh, accessible and relate the resources uh, coming from the three research uh, communities and to retrieve information that can be used by different uh, dis uh, disciplines, like the interoperability and the reusability. Uh, next one. So for this reason, as a fourth step of the methodology, uh, interdisciplinary data sets within the uh, VSIM research communities uh, have been identified to be used as case studies for testing the application of the cross-disciplinary ontological solution. And two case studies are presented here. It's the um, Aroni collection, the data sets of the Museum of Re and the Museum of Republic of Spirska. So the first one is an online digitized collection consists uh, of a case of split collections uh, uh, that covers various scientific fields, like for example, paleontology, life science, ecology, and the data sets are described according to simple metadata fields that cannot be attributable to a standardized metadata schema, uh, enriched by the presence of a taxonomy. The second case instead represents data from uh, five museum uh, collections that cover different fields. So from uh, archeology, span history, ethnology, natural history, and all described, this is the, uh, a very interesting case, uh, through not standardized uh, metadata. Um, so uh, uh, this uh, uh, cross and interdisciplinary infrastructure have to face the problem of data harmonization and data integration. And this kind of issues requires a decision to, uh, to be made whether one should construct a new ontology or using an existing one. Next one. So on the base of the ontological solution uh, assessed and the analysis of the overall data and the uh, specific case uh, studies, we propose a framework based on the uh, already existing uh, CDOC CRM and uh, its uh, extensions. 
uh, in particular uh, uh, those uh, related to uh, extensions related to science and digital uh, that used are used for the description data came, uh, coming from different uh, research fields uh, to fulfill the fair uh, principle. Uh, in fact, this uh, solution, uh, we decided to, to use this solution because it's a stable and also flexible ontology already tested within uh, different uh, uh, fields. And uh, um, it's possible to further develop uh, for uh, the case uh, of the VSIM project, but also for any other cross-disciplinary in, uh, infrastructure. Um, so the last step of the methodology consists of use this uh, um, semantic, this ontology to describe the case studies uh, previously uh, mentioned. Uh, and through this, uh, um, this, this uh, ontology and uh, its extension allow to describe different kinds of information with a common ontological tool, not flattening the information and guaranteeing uh, interoperability. Uh, the next uh, one, so this is uh, also another, uh, the other case, uh, for example, uh, for the second uh, case study. Also in, the, in this case, uh, the uh, data have been, the data sets have been uh, described uh, by CDOC. And this was particularly important because of the lack of previous uh, metadata standards. And uh, it helps to visualize how um, also a more complicated description can be better managed and used for fulfilling the, the fair uh, uh, principle. Uh, and uh, also in this case, if you click, please, we can see also uh, the um, flexibility of this solution because also mm, it was possible to test uh, different alternatives, alternatives uh, to describe uh, data. Um, next one. So as a further stop, step, uh, the solution uh, drawn also on the case studies uh, can also be integrated with uh, another ontological solution. This, for example, is the uh, Parthenos uh, uh, ontology, a semantic approach based on, on CDOC and uh, devoted to the ontological description of the research infrastructure themselves. So this is very uh, important because such a choice also allows uh, to be in line with other research uh, in, uh, in the field in order also to collaborate in the future towards uh, a common integrated solution and to guarantee the fulfillment of the fair principles even between uh, several research uh, infrastructures. So next one. So just to summarize, uh, today I addressed the issue of the development of a, a semantic knowledge framework uh, to support the data management of multidisciplinary research infrastructure and guarantee its uh, fairness. Uh, the application to the case study demonstrates that semantic uh, artifacts, as we uh, so uh, mentioned by Gerard, uh, such as uh, ontologies, uh, uh, controlled vocabularies, uh, and thesauri, and other uh, knowledge organization systems are fundamental for the implementation of the FAIR principles, especially, for instance, uh, concerning the interoperability principle uh, within uh, multidisciplinary uh, research infrastructures. Uh, thank you very much. The next one. This work has been also published uh, in a paper. Maybe if you are interested, I can share the, the link uh, to the paper. Thank you. Thank you very much, Valentina. Very, very impressive and very good to, to see how you managed to, uh, to do um, what were the results of such an interdisciplinary uh, approach. Uh, and now maybe we have one or two questions that we can answer. Um, were there any questions? No questions, but if you have any question, we could, we could allocate one or two minutes now for Valentina. If not, then I can continue with uh, Adam's presentation. So, great. Adam. Yes, so uh, welcome everyone. My name is uh, Adam Sadovaldi, and I work at the University of Debrecen as a data steward and uh, repository manager. 
Uh, our university launched uh, a data repository system, which we called uh, Adattar, and I just wanted to summarize some of our experiences and uh, and uh, some, giving some advice who wants the same, I mean, establish or launch a data repository. Okay, click. Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, data ref the, the data repositories are not cover uh, 100 percent of uh, the fair principle but uh, in my point of view uh, is it one of the most uh, important um, infrastructure which we uh, need to uh, to introduce for the researcher or to the researcher uh, because uh, they need to uh, use uh, these infrastructure uh, and uh, they need to uh, make uh, this use for their workflows. Okay, so this uh, sentence is come from, uh, sorry, go back. <laughs> yeah, so this sentence is come from uh, the business model for sustainability uh, research data repositories. And uh, this, this is a really uh, stuff one, but uh, addition, additional to this, uh, the, the author seems that uh, data repositories being considerable uh, economic, scientific, and social benefits. So these are really important infrastructure. Okay, uh, can you? Yes. So uh, the data repositories based on uh, fair principle can prove the minimal uh, information in order to uh, the meet the, the fair principle. So this is, these are the findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. The, the interoperable is uh, the hardest one, uh, which is not uh, depends on the, the data repositories, more or less uh, to the data set, which uh, the researcher uploaded to the data repositories. Uh, but uh, the others, I mean, the findable, accessible, and reusable can help uh, to, to these requirements for the researcher uh, with the data repositories. Okay, next slide, please. So here is the minimum uh, requirements uh, which we meet when, when we uh, think about FAIR. Uh, and I, th these are just come from the monitoring the open access policy of Horizon 2020 uh, report. So here is the findable, accessible, interoperable, and usable requirements. Uh, and uh, I wanted to cover these uh, topics into my, uh, into my slides. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, now you can see the landing page of our uh, data repositories. Uh, this is my, one of my uh, PhD course, uh, which I used to, uh, to give some uh, advice to the researcher or the PhD uh, candidates, uh, how they can use uh, the open science initiatives and the data repositories. So what we can see here, here we can find the global unique and persistent identifier, which is a DOI uh, come from the, uh, the data site. Uh, find uh, some, uh, citation for the data and uh, in the right side you can see the metrics. Uh, can you go? Yes, <laughs> thank you. Can you go? Yeah. Uh, here is uh, you can find the licensage which is necessary for the FAIR principle. The uh, Dataverse software uses uh, CC0 as a default, uh, default, but if you want to restrict some of your or the researcher want to restrict uh, some of their files, uh, they can use another one or they can make uh, a guest book if they want. So can keep track who is, uh, uses their file or who wants to, uh, to use their file uh, and uh, for the metadata. Can you go here? Okay, uh, so. Here uh, we can translate it. Uh, one of the best uh, recommendation about uploading data, which I, which we found. So this is the RDA Publishing Data Services uh, Working Group uh, recommendation. This is Hungarian, but you can find the source uh, in in the Zenodo. 
Uh, here, uh, the researcher can uh, access and uh, have a knowledge about uh, how the how, what is the importance of the uh, data repositories, uh, the publishing data, and how they can do so. That, uh, yeah. Next slide, please. Okay, so here we can find the metadata which I wanted to highlight it uh, because these are the most uh, or the or the most important yeah uh, thing uh, when you upload it uh, your data. So uh, here you can find uh, the metadata schemas uh, which uh, the software the database software offers for the the uploads uh, methods. Uh, these are uh, discipline spe specific, so if you click, not now because this is just a picture, but if you click on one of the boxes or the, or the plus, uh, you can find many options. Can you, uh, yeah, next slide please, uh, we can, I can show that here, here. So now you can see which is the optional or required field which uh, researcher uh, need to fill in. And uh, can you go back, back, uh, Ellie, please? Here at the bottom of the page, uh, you can find a fabric where a researcher can uh, make their own uh, metadata uh, fields. Uh, but the, the minimal is uh, the citation metadata, which uh, the data site DUI system requires from the researcher. Yeah, next slide, please. Okay, uh, sorry, next slide, please. So how they can engage uh, the researcher. We hold uh, lots of meetups, workshops, and, uh, and trainings about this topic, because not just the stakeholders engagement is important, but uh, rather than the, the researcher, because they use their uh, these uh, infrastructure. And uh, they we wanted to convince uh, the uh, the usage and uh, improve their open science skills. Uh, I mean the whole area, and not just for the the data repositories. Uh, but uh, but the researcher is the most prominent role in it. And uh, next slide, please. Yeah. So thank you for your attention. Uh, if you have any question, I I uh, really happy to answer it. Thank you very much, Adam. Uh, let's see if we have any questions in the chat. We have some resources shared by Gerard. Um, but no question, but, but no questions. Yes. So, um, I think that we are now, uh, that we can now move on to the Q&A, um, which we have, which, which we can do uh, in, a, in a hybrid uh, model, like both, you can add your questions in the chat and we could continue with the Menti. So, let me again share my screen. Uh, and if you could please let us know, uh, if, if you could go, sorry, if you could go to the, again, to the menti.com, uh, to, the, to, to the same, use the same code, 58937227, and answer, we have three questions for this Q&A, answer these questions. What type of research data service do you represent based on the, uh, you know, the life cycle, the research data management life cycle? Data analysis, data reuse, data collection, data access and preservation. Okay. Data processing, even. Mm -hmm. So most uh, most are targeted towards access and preservation. Then we have reused, collection, processing, and data 
uh, data analysis and data processing. And another, if you could add uh, the, the particular answer that you that you would like to provide under other, if you could specify it in the chat, that would be great. Okay, so we have, okay. Great, so that, that, that's good. We, we have a variety of, uh, of uh, types of services, um, which means that, uh, that there are, um, may be similar issues, but, uh, but should be addressed in a different way based on, the, based on the type of the service. So if I can go next. Name your top three challenges when dealing with metadata ontologies and semantics. So what, what are the top three challenges that you faced and you uh, provided solution or that you haven't provided a solution yet? Uh, for your service when applying the FERP principles. Picking the ontology to use, okay. The data standards. Integration with the repository. Finding a metadata template that is machine actionable. Lack of standardization, definition of vocabularies. So I guess that goes with the ontologies there. Different metadata for different fields, too much emphasis. So I guess that, that goes to heterogeneity issues. Too much emphasis on the researcher providing metadata. Uh, overcoming heterogeneity. Ah, okay, that, that, there is that also. Again, to find the right standard, standardization. So standardization is, is uh, and heterogeneity is one of the key challenges. If I go, if I scroll further, lack of domain-specific ontologies, challenge to make different metadata ontologies interoperable, technical limitation to this space. Mm -hmm. Uh, lack of metadata for each data set, lack of awareness of what has already been done. Okay, that's, that's very interesting. And that's where training and, uh, and um, uh, the, the open science community efforts to, to spread awareness is, is um, very important. Use common data file formats, common metadata, interoperable data processing, and multidisciplinarity. Uh, maybe one of, of our uh, speakers would like to pick one and uh, comment. Pick, pick one of those uh, challenges and comments. Yeah, I don't mind to, to jump in. I, I put a link um, already in the chat when I see about the, the lack of domain specific ontologies. I think this is definitely within some um, domains uh, and even disciplines a challenge. So I know that within the RDA, the ambassador for engineering had done a piece of research to look at the availability of, of semantic artifacts and ontologies for engineering. And it's surprisingly low in comparison to other, other um, uh, disciplines. So I think uh, in some cases, this, this idea of the digitization and, and as we move through different types of working and enabling FAIR, people start at different levels um, in terms of readiness. So if you compare with a community like the life sciences, um, uh, bioinform bioinformatics is really, really highly developed. So this is like a, a bit of a challenge. Um, and I think here with the lack of domain specific ontologies, so sometimes they aren't available, but also sometimes people just aren't aware of uh, where they are or how to find them. So I'm going to put one potential solution in the chat, a link to a registry called Bartok, which um, I, I'm personally involved in, so it's a bit of a plug also, but um, yeah, the, the question came up, so I think it's appropriate, it's okay. But this is, but this addresses the, where is it? The, where was it? The need to communicate uh, all the different uh, advan uh, advancements. So, so thank you, thank you, Gerard. Uh, so anyone else would like to pick one and comment? I'm just scrolling again so you can see which one you would like to pick.
I can I can go go for for another one as well. The the machine action ability. Um, I think it's one of the one of the issues. I think already is just at the level of policies for different service providers of of um saying what they do and and providing access to uh, the all of the different components that they use um for for semantic services. And then the point on the machine action ability, I think it's even you know one step further um, that, that affects everybody uh, for enabling this machine to machine, uh, even having machine readable um, information uh, presented in some cases for some domains, it is not available. So again, it comes back to this idea that uh, different domains are really, really at different, um, uh, different points along this trajectory. Uh, sometimes we use the idea of uh, steps towards uh, linked open data um, within fair is fair to, to show the difference between people working you know, from, from books or then from uh, in the context of, of PDFs and where the information is basically more trapped and enclosed uh, towards uh, uh, moving the way up the semantic staircase to having uh, ontologies that are are able to be used as part of pipelines for processing and the need for that is different depending on different domains and also then the readiness is, is really different as well mm -hmm. thank you Jared. so um anyone else This this one more so that we move on to the before we move on to the next one, the last one, the last question. I would just comment uh, something uh, that it's very interesting that all these uh, uh, top three challenges uh, uh, provided by the people here today, they are uh, things that I also mentioned in the uh, in, in my presentation. And uh, um, and that came out uh, uh, very clearly uh, from uh, uh, the survey uh, done uh, at the beginning uh, of this uh, research work. So I think uh, also this is a very um, interesting uh, uh, step in the uh, development of on the use of uh, a semantic uh, artifact to well understand what is the state of the art of the uh, providers in order to, um, to make them communicate uh, in order to express the needs, the requirements uh, they need, because they could be very different uh, also uh, from uh, um, um, let's say a community uh, respect to another like for example Gerald said uh, it's very um, very true <laughs> let's say that for example life science uh, has already you know a step uh, up uh, while the the, the remaining uh, communities other communities uh, are uh, a bit uh, behind uh, so we had to, uh, especially in this uh, research infrastructure, multidisciplinary and cross-disciplinary infrastructures, is very um, useful to, uh, to, to make, to homogenize also the different communities in order to, uh, to put at the same level and uh, from that step go ahead and then developing uh, a semantic artifact that is able to uh, yes, uh, uh, harmonize uh, all the data and then uh, uh, make possible, for example, other um, specific um, things like uh, reuse of the data, because this is uh, uh, also another important uh, um, aspect uh, that sometimes we use uh, our data and our data sets just for uh, our own type of research. Instead, it's very interesting to put in relation different uh, communities, different kind of data sets, and reuse uh, data also in a more, uh, let's say, uh, interesting way, so a new way. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you very much. Um... And if I can comment it on that, so as I'm scrolling, I saw a few um, entries mentioning about 
uh, finding the right standard um, and generally finding information about uh, you know ontologies and and, uh, and semantics and choose which one to use. Um, there are a few resources which I will link once I will stop sharing my screen. I will, I will uh, add them in the chat. Uh, there is a um, metadata standards uh, catalog. Uh, that you can uh, you, you can consult uh, for your research and for your uh, to, to integrate uh, you know with your service which which metadata standards you could use uh, if it's something that is not built in for example to to the service like the dataverse example uh, that uh, was shown by um, Adam. Um, and uh, yes, and this, this exercise, uh, this activity in Ethos Europe actually aims to provide um, answers to, to all of them. And um, not only answers, because there, there are answers, but uh, use cases, like specific, uh, specific use cases uh, that could be applicable uh, to you based on the different, based on the, based on the type of service uh, that you have, like what, what, what are the, how, how this applies to data uh, access uh, services, to data analysis services, and so on. So um, I'm, I'm interested to see how we're going to um, uh, answer all these uh, throughout the, the, the next months. Uh, and last, because we have three minutes and I'm mindful of that, uh, which tools and services do you use for semantics? So we are very interested to know if you have used any of the tools mentioned, maybe, or um, if you have any other tool or service that you're using that you have integrated, for example, in order to um, serve the metadata. Sorry, I need to interrupt you, but I put it in the chat too. Uh, really uh, best, I think, uh, option for found some really good information about uh, metadata. This is one of the RDA metadata schema directory and the fair sharing. Uh, these are which we recommended for, for researcher. Thank you, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So we have Bardot, Protege, uh, Hopent, Protege again, Ontology, Widako. Mm -hmm. So if any of the, of the speakers would like to comment as we, we receive more uh, input, as we have only one minute, that would be good. I mean, if you if you are familiar with any of these tools and you would like to comment. I will also share, um, there, there are the uh, opener guidelines for interoperability uh, also that you could use, but that's um, on the level of uh, exchanging information with, uh, between systems, between um, repositories. So I will share that with you afterwards. Anyone would like to comment? Personally, I use Protege, but it's very interesting to, uh, to be informed about uh, others. Uh, and actually, this could be yes, very interesting to put together all these uh, uh, services and tools uh, we uh, are uh, now discovering and uh, provide the yes, access to these uh, yeah. services tools. Yeah. Yeah. And analyze them, see see what are the uh, advantages and disadvantages maybe. In the particular um, uh, use that they um, 
are better for. Um, could you please, there is a question, could you please share the protege your early? Okay, if someone could do that. All right, so we are uh, one, oh, okay, we, we, we are, we, are uh, we, we should wrap up, I think. Uh, thank you very much for uh, being here today. It was a uh, nice, uh, um, nice uh, being in this diverse uh, uh, and international uh, audience. And thank you very much to the speakers, everyone, for, for organizing this session. Um, I, I, I really look forward to see what the Ferris Fair and MIFOS are bringing uh, to, to that uh, area of uh, how service providers, uh, you know, um, um, address and how, how they can apply over the fair principles, what, what they need to do uh, in the coming months. And uh, probably we'll see you in uh, another uh, event, um, similar event. Uh, of the open science community and the research data management community. So, thank you very much, everyone, and uh, we'll we'll share the material afterwards with you. Thanks very much, Ali. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thanks, Ali. Bye.